Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with Surfbooks Art Labs. Welcome to the underground lair where we create what? Robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And this one's a doozy. This, this, one's, a, this one's definitely a threat. Um, but maybe he's, he could be a good guy. Maybe he's a, uh, maybe he's like an anti-hero or whatever. But, so I'm in the process right now. I'm just in the middle of this, this, uh, it's kind of like an alien space mercenary guy. So I'm going to show you how I got to this point. And then we're going to go ahead and, and we're going to color this guy in and, and see, see what happens. So, uh, yeah, we'll talk about some cool art stuff and everything, but yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are with uh, our sketch of the uh, space mercenary type guy. Um, already, the pencils are already done, and you know I keep forgetting to film some of this, the actual drawing stages. And the reason why is a lot of times I'll just be somewhere sketching. I won't have a camera with me, and you know, and I never know when I start sketching what you know what I'm going to come up with. Some things I like, some things you know just get you know tossed aside. So I don't always film everything, so that's why a lot of times I, the, the drawing is already pre-done. Um, so, you know, so right now I just kind of want to share a little bit of the inking process, and we'll, we'll talk about some art things and uh, stuff like that. But uh, here, what I'm using right now, so to do the penciling, I used a Pentel uh, Color Race, or Prisma, sorry, Prisma Color Color Race uh, pencils. Uh, they're just they're you know they come in different colors they're they're erasable to certain to a certain extent um, and I tend to like them I use usually use like a red or a blue or sometimes like a, a sepia or something like that um, but for inking I'm using uh, this is a fairly new tool that I've I've been using it is the uh, <laughs> excuse me the uh, the Kiritaki uh, it's just a Kiritaki fountain brush number thirteen I believe. And I am really liking this brush a lot. Um, it's very good for on the go. I don't have to. I don't have to keep dipping it in like an inkwell or anything like I do the brush. And I'm finding that I'm getting really good line weights with it. So uh, <laughs> really digging it. And I used to use the uh, Pentel pocket brush. And for some reason that that it's to me it it, it uh, just kind of varies what kind of what I can get out of it. Um, and maybe as I use this, maybe the maybe it's just the brush will get worn down, and maybe it'll, I kind of have the same issues with it. But for right now, it is working very nicely, and I'm I'm really digging it. And it speeds up the process a little, just not having to dip your dip your brush every time. Now, if I'm going to add a lot of blacks and things, I probably wouldn't want to use this because of the you know it comes with little cartridges, and those cartridges I can go through them pretty quick because I do a lot of inking. Um, and especially if you're using it to, to do like heavy blacks and things like that. So, um, but it did come with, I think, uh, the package when I, when I got this brush came, or brush pen came with, uh, I think three or four extra cartridges. So that's good. Um, but anyway, so I, I figured, you know, there was a topic I, I kind of wanted to talk about and it was kind of sparked be because I've been watching uh, some of the Olympics on TV, just sort of in the background and, and you know, when I'm hanging out over my girlfriend's house and everything. Um, but uh, this just kind of the notion or the, the idea or, or the question actually of, you know, are great artists, are they, are they born talented or is it, you know, is it something you, you know, you have to learn and you have to practice that and everything like that. And just just watching the Olympics, this kind of came came to the surface for me, and I started thinking about it because I'm watching these athletes just do these you know incredible things. This is mostly we were watching you know the the gymnasts and stuff, and just the things that they were doing, and and um, and then you're asking yourself, well, are they are these people just just born with this ability to do that? And of course. Of course, the answer I'm sure almost everyone would agree. No, they're not. I mean, there's there's certain things. I mean, you you can be born, uh, you know, and you may have like a leg up genetically. Uh, maybe some some people are born with like a disability or health issues that might you know might be an obstacle for them to have to overcome. And maybe some people are just born the perfect image of health, and that helps. Or maybe you know, maybe your your parents are both you know six foot five, and you know all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, there, there are some factors that play into it, but that alone isn't enough to just guarantee that you're going to be this, you know, amazing athlete and everything. And, and 
again, what kind of what kind of you know drove this home to me because I'm you're listening to the you're listening to the commentators and you know the commentators are they'll just go on about you know you know how much you know how hard they've worked for this and and you know how many hours a day they put in and and all the things that they've sacrificed to to you know to to be here to be at the Olympics and everything and you know <laughs> in comparison to being an artist or just in you know to bring it back to you know to my world and I'm nowhere near I mean obviously you know the Olympics these are the best of the best in the world from all over the world um, and I'm nowhere I'm nowhere near that but uh, you know on a smaller scale um, it's it's just funny because I I think with things like athletics and and uh, you know just a lot of different disciplines people do understand that you know it it takes there's there's a lot of work involved there's there's a lot of practice and 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 perseverance and and you know and just dedication and all that um, but you know sometimes with art it's, it seems like it's it's a little different you know they just sort of the kind of the attitude towards art that a lot of people have but I think a lot of people have this notion that you know having the ability to draw or just being creative in general is this like mystic thing that that either just happens or that you're somehow born with it and in some cases you know that that could be the case I mean you, you hear about these savants that are just you know brilliant from like day one but uh, you know I would say the vast majority of, of artists I mean it, it it wasn't you know maybe it's it, and it can be easier for some people than others some people it takes a lot longer I mean some people I know that that you know they kind of start drawing later in life and you know they're bet, way better than I am um, but still you know they're, they're still practicing they're still you know they they've still found that passion and, and that drive and everything that I think is is the bulk of it so but you know <sighs> There's there there are different factors in play, but for the most part, I mean, you know, people come up to you, and you know, any artist has heard this one a million times, but you know, you people come up and say, oh, you're you're you know, you're so talented, and oh, I can't draw, I, I can't even you know draw a straight line with the ruler, and you know, and it, it when when they say that, obviously, it's it's a compliment and everything, and it, it sh and you should take it as a compliment, but, but on the other hand, it, there's there's it, it's they're not trying to be dismissive but in a way it does take away from you know the amount of time and and, and you know how much how much you have put into your craft and you've honed it you know for years or, or however long you've been doing this and you know and and you know sometimes I'll let that go and I never you know I never you know put anyone on a blast or anything for something saying something like that but sometimes you know I'll explain well yeah I mean they're you know you know I, I I was probably, for as long as I can remember, I've been drawing, so I was probably born with this inclination, sort of to draw. But, but you know, I've, you know, it's a lot of hard work too, and you kind of, and you know, I, you might, say, I might say, well, you know, if you, if you really, if you were really interested, you really wanted to, I'm sure you could, it was, with a little practice, you could draw a pretty good straight line even without a ruler. Um, so. <laughs> But, you know, going back to the Olympics where you would hear the commentators saying, you know, oh, this person, you know, they practice for, you know, <laughs> 12 to 14 hours a day. And, 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 you know, and I can speak for myself as an artist. I mean, I have put, I, you know, I put typically at least 12 hours a day into drawing and things like that. But it just, it, I don't think to the, the general public or people outside who aren't artists really really get that or understand that um, and it's like so if you're in baseball when you go you know that people if you know if you're if you're in a baseball team you oh you got to go to baseball practice or if you're in a band I, I gotta go to band practice but I don't think as long as I've been doing this I've ever heard anyone say I've got to go to art practice or they don't it just it's not in the vernacular and it's just not it's a, it's an entirely different thing and again I think that's because people just think that it's just it just it's like this automatic thing and they're there maybe it isn't you know I guess if you would sit somebody down and and kind of prompt them on this and they say oh no yeah it takes it must take a lot of practice but when you really sit down and think about it 
Um, but I don't think people do think about it. I just think it's something that's kind of, kind of in the, I don't know if I want to say in the zeitgeist or just in the, you know, the way people think about things that it's, it's just this, this magic ability. And, um, and where I think that might be harmful is that, that attitude is, um, when you're a professional and when you're, you know, when you do art professionally, if people just think that it's really no big deal, oh, you know, then that's, that's when sometimes the artwork gets devalued. Because when people think, oh, it's just this simple thing, you know, you just get out your, your pencil and your paper and the, the magic just happens, you know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, no big deal. Um, but, you know, it, <laughs> it does, it does take, it does take a lot of thought when you approach something and there, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, sometimes it does seem like mad. Sometimes I just get ideas and it's like, oh, wow, I just go to town and, and it just comes together and sometimes it's a struggle. However, even in the times where things come easy to me, the only reason for that is because the amount of practice that I put in, and even though we don't, like I said before, even though we, we, we don't say, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to art practice today. You may say, oh, I'm going to go drawing with some friends, or, or no, I gotta stay home and draw, or I gotta stay home and work on some stuff, or, or, or I'm gonna, or even if you're taking classes, I'm gonna go to art class, but it's not, it's not art practice, it's art class, and I think just because we've never used that word practice, people don't, don't equate that to, oh, he's constantly working on his craft, or he or she is constantly working to become a better artist. So because of that, when, when say if you're, if you're working with a client or something and, and if they just think it's this easy thing, then that devalues the work and they, they don't think that it's worth enough that, that they should have to put out enough money, even though, you know, I think they realize they, they don't think it's, it, it's not the attitude of, oh, it's just so easy, anyone can do it, because they realize, I, I'm pretty sure everyone realizes that, no, not everyone can do this, but you can do this. You, you, for you, it's no big deal. You know, you just you just do it. It's, it's so so. What's the big deal? You know, I mean, it's 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 no big deal for you. So you can, you know, it's it shouldn't shouldn't cost that much. It's real easy. But but when you consider the, the you know the time, the effort, the passion, the everything that drives you to get you to that point, it's a lot of work, and and you should be compensated for that. Um, and and I kind of want to bring this up for for all the people that. You know, maybe younger artists or whatever who are starting out um, to realize this also because I th I think a lot of artists get frustrated when things aren't going their way or or you know a particular drawing or whatever or they just can't they just can't nail like a certain pose that they want or or whatever it is and it really does just take practice and that's the main thing is you have to you have to keep going and you have to you know you have to want it and you have to if you don't have that drive or that passion then it's going to be really difficult for you um, and you just have to know that that it does take time and it, there's no shortcuts you can't just it, you know I think everyone is looking for you know when you search things like tips uh, tips on this and of course you can give out tips and there's different ways you can you can you know ha Have little tools or little advice or things to add sort of your arsenal, but By and large, I mean it really does it, it takes time and it, it's gonna if you want to be a great artist You're gonna have to put in the time and some people aren't willing to do that and it's just like with any with anything you know with say learning a musical instrument when I was a kid you know I wanted a guitar I wanted I wanted to be in a band and but you know I got that guitar my parents hey I don't know it's probably a lot of money they bought me this guitar I took a couple lessons and you know back then I would have told you yeah, it's you know it's just too hard or whatever but I just didn't want it enough is what it boils down to but I wanted to be an artist enough that I could I could keep going keep putting in the time and I could uh, you know get to a point where I could kind of make a career out of this. So so just keep that in mind. Uh, it, it is going to take work. I mean, there's there's no, there really aren't really any huge shortcuts. I mean, if you want to do this, you got to put in the time and, and you got to really, uh, really want it. 
Um, so anyway, so back to the drawing, kind of finishing up. I've been using a, just a variety of different markers to kind of fill this in. I've used my, I use the Copic markers. I use also the uh, Pantone Trium markers. Um, which I don't think the ones I'm using right here are still available, but I do believe they make them um, in a different, they may look a little different. Um, and I also use the, the, what's the other one, the Spectrum Noir markers. Um, and they're all, you know, the, I, you know, the Copics are the best. I would, I would recommend those. They are the most expensive, but really any kind of alcohol based markers, it's, it's, well, this is a, you know, we could do a whole other topic of, of tools and everything, but but it, it's sometimes it's not really not the tools. It just it's how you kind of you know work with what you have because you see all these cool challenges online. Now the three marker challenge or the the cheap art supply challenge, and you can make stuff look good with some of that stuff. Again, it all comes back to time, putting in the time and figuring out how to do that stuff. So. Oh, no, 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 no,